Okay, so first up to make the chocolate babka, I've got 220 grams of whole fat milk, and to that I've added 10 grams of active dried yeast and 100 grams of ordinary white granulated sugar. I'm just gonna give that a mix to make sure that everything's well dissolved. I'm going in with two whole eggs. Each one of these weighs about 50 grams. And again, we'll just give that a quick mix to make sure it's all well incorporated. And to that, I'm going to add 500 grams of all-purpose white, 13.2% protein flour. And then with my hand, I'm just gonna give it a quick mix to make sure everything is well incorporated. Now I'm adding 100 grams of ordinary unsalted butter, uh, which is room temperature and I've just roughly diced up. Now, if you wanna use a stand mixer for this process, of course you can. I enjoy mixing dough by hand. And if you do decide to make this recipe by hand, just understand that this mixture is gonna be really wet and really sticky. But it's good fun to make with your hands, that's for sure. So using your hand just to squash all of the butter, the idea here is to make sure that everything is really well mixed and smooth. Again, you're not gonna be able to bring this into a ball, but you need to make sure that all of the butter has been well incorporated through that mix. Time is now gonna work its magic. We're not gonna do anything with this dough for probably the next hour or so. So just cover it up either with some cling wrap or a plastic bag and leave it out at room temperature for about an hour to an hour and a half. Now following that bench rest, it's time for sticky stage number two. And if you're doing this by hand, resist the urge to add any flour. We're gonna use the stickiness to our advantage and it's gonna help us build the gluten in this dough. Now, you're not gonna be able to form this into any sensible shape. The idea is just to push it around using that stickiness to stretch all of that gluten and this is where we're gonna to begin to develop the structure for the dough. After five or 10 minutes, you'll feel the strength in the dough build and you'll see that the dough is now wanting to stay in one big mass. So I'm just gonna perform a few slap and folds. There's many different techniques out here, but basically I am just slapping that dough down on the counter because it's sticky. I can then stretch the dough out and fold it back over on itself. And I'll do this for about the next five minutes. And that's that, the messy part is now over. You can see the ball's coming together a lot easier. I've put a little bit of vegetable oil on my hands to stop it sticking. And I'm just gonna work that round into a ball and try and get a nice coherent shape. We're gonna pop that into a bowl. There's no need to oil the bowl. We're gonna cover it up and this is gonna sit in the fridge overnight. And here we are the next day, and today is where the magic happens. We get to put this babka together and bake it off, and that's gonna begin with the chocolate coating that goes on the inside. Now I've added 250 grams of 70% cacao chocolate, 180 grams of unsalted butter, and 100 grams of sugar, and two tablespoons of cocoa powder to a pan, and then gently heated this until it's melted through. And then I'm gonna leave it in a bowl on the side until it's cooled to room temperature. You don't wanna use this hot. Now leave the dough in the fridge until you're ready to roll this out and you can see how much more workable this is now that it's had a rest in the fridge overnight. But really important to roll this out while it's cold. I'm just pushing it into a rough rectangle shape. I'm gonna lightly flour the work surface and lightly flour the dough. Now the recipe we've used gives a really manageable dough. You shouldn't have any problems rolling this out into a really large rectangle. Use a bit of flour if needed and don't worry if the edges aren't completely square. Make sure you don't roll this too thin. We're shooting for a thickness of about five millimeters. Now it's very important to make sure this chocolate's come down to room temp because if it's too warm, when we spread it onto the dough, it's gonna make it really, really sticky and it's gonna become a complete nightmare to roll up. So take your room temp chocolate, pour it over the top and then just using a spatula, spread it out nice and thinly. You don't need to go all the way to the edges and it will just save a big clean up at the end. Next, I'm gonna be adding some of the chocolate that I saved from earlier, which I've just roughly chopped, and I'll follow that up with some roughly chopped pistachios. 
And now it's time to get this rolled up. Now, as long as the dough was cold when you rolled it out and that chocolate had come down to room temp, this should be pretty straightforward. Starting at one end, just gently lift up the dough and make sure nothing's stuck to the counter and then move forward, rolling it up nice and tight. Now, if the dough does stick a little bit and it tears, don't worry, just keep rolling. Once we've got it all rolled up and in the mold and it's cooked, you will never know. Once you've got a few turns out of the way, this will become a lot easier to roll and you can just gently start pushing it forward. But it is important to keep this tight. We don't want a loose roll. I'll leave all of the recipe details in the description for the video and do let me know in the comments section if you've got any questions at all and I'll answer those for you as well. If you're enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed and you'd like to see my future videos, then do click the subscribe button and click the little bell icon to get future notifications. And there we have it, one fully rolled babka. And now we need to cut the dough in half. Now you wanna work quite quickly. And again, don't worry if it's not exact. I like to use a bench scraper. You could also use a serrated knife. Now it's time to plait the babka in preparation for popping it in the tin. Now, quite simply, you're just gonna fold one side over the other, keep working to the end and gently pinch them together. I would say that it's important to keep those chocolate cuts the kind of open half of the dough facing upwards. Now this recipe makes enough for two babkas, so just divide the dough into two. I've prepped this Pullman baking pan with some non-stick parchment paper to make it easier to get out when it's finished baking. You can squash the babka together a bit like a concertina and just ease it into the tin. And then this is either gonna prove out on the side for a couple of hours, or it can prove for 24 hours, you know, overnight in the fridge. And now it's proved it's gonna bake in a preheated oven, 180 degrees C on bake mode. And that's it, all cooked. That just leaves one more job to do, and that is to brush the top of this with a simple sugar syrup that's come down to room temperature, and that's gonna give this a really nice shiny gloss. And using those parchment handles, you can just pull the babka out, and then it's completely up to you. You can allow this to cool to room temperature, or dive straight in. There is absolutely no way I'm going to leave this to cool down. Look at all of those chocolatey layers. That's just awesome. Okay, we'll give this a whirl. It is so light. Wow. This is an amazing recipe. Very bizarre. You can kind of tell it's a bread, but it, it's got a bit of an identity crisis. It thinks it's a cake as well. That bread is just really really airy it definitely benefited from the rise in the fridge and then you've got all of that chocolatey goodness sugar levels really well balanced and you get a nice crunch from the pistachio this is an awesome awesome bread you've got to give it a go thank you very much for watching i'm now going to devour this hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video subscribe for my future content and i'll see you again very soon